In this update, I have some new information regarding this storm right here, which I alluded to in recent videos. Flash flooding, strong winds, and more heavy mountain snow are the primary threats we have on the table with this storm. And then beyond this specific system, the weather is showing no signs of slowing down, so I have an update on what you can expect as February ends and March begins. We have quite a bit of information to get through today, so let's get straight into it. To start off, we're going to take a wide view of North America and Europe to get the big picture of what's going on. In North America, we don't have too much going on just yet, other than the West Coast where we have two pieces of energy getting ready to join forces. We also have this system right here exiting parts of Canada, and that's in the process of crashing right into Greenland today. If you follow the associated cold front further south, you're going to notice a separate area of low pressure spinning up off the Carolinas. These systems will then advance across the Atlantic Ocean over the next couple of days, arriving in Europe between the 27th and the 29th of February. Before we do talk about this next wave of storms, we have this system right here which has my attention. It's already bringing widespread precipitation from southern Ireland and England down into France and Iberia, and by tonight into tomorrow, the center of low pressure will move into France, where it's going to quickly weaken. The rain will spread further east, reaching the Benelux into Germany, and then the associated cold front will spread southward across Iberia, bringing some pretty strong winds and heavy rain. As early as Monday afternoon, the storm will seemingly fall apart, but that won't necessarily mean it's over. While conditions will improve further north and west, torrential rainfall looks to continue into southern France and Italy. But this won't be a one or two day event because as we keep pushing this forward through the week, this system is not going to be in any rush. Even by the last day of February, which is Thursday, it's still going to be sticking around in the Mediterranean. And if current model guidance is correct, it may even go through a brief restrengthening period as it meanders over the warm waters. But then once we do reach the first few days of March, it does look like this storm will finally fizzle out. We're going to revisit the weather tracker map in a little bit, but first we have to look at the expected precipitation from this storm. I'm sure you can tell why this system has me concerned. Multiple days of torrential rain is going to add up, and you can really see that in parts of Italy, northern Algeria, Sardinia and Corsica, northern Spain, and even parts of Greece. But the area of heightened concern is Italy, where those yellow and orange shades are abundant. Keep in mind that a lot of areas may pick up between 100 and 200 millimeters of precipitation, perhaps even more. Here's another couple of graphics I like to use, and it's the extreme precipitation and wind monitor. This does a pretty good job at showing where the precipitation and wind is going to be most severe. For today, Sunday, February 25th, precipitation is going to be heaviest in parts of southern Ireland, England, parts of France, Iberia, and also towards the Ionian Sea, since we do have a separate storm there. We also have some heavier precipitation up towards Belarus and western Russia. As far as the winds go, it looks like strong winds will affect similar areas as heavy rain. Heading into Monday, the heaviest rain is going to shift southeastward, with the primary areas of concern being in northern Spain and Italy. And then we also see a stripe of green from Belarus into Russia. As far as wind goes, it's going to be pretty strong on the backside of that cold front, so I would expect blustery conditions from France down into Portugal, Spain, and even the Canary Islands. On Tuesday, that extreme precipitation monitor is still hinting at parts of Spain, Italy, and Algeria getting in on that heavy rain, and we're going to see that continue going forward. For the wind risk, we're going to see an uptick in the strong wind potential further north as those new storms cross the Atlantic. Blustery conditions will persist in parts of southern Europe, but take a look at the Canary Islands in Morocco. We have some deep orange shades there, so I would definitely look out for an especially windy day. By Wednesday the 28th, we see hints of heavy precip around Ireland, which of course is because of those new storms arriving. But now down around Italy and the western Mediterranean, we're still seeing those green shades showing up, so we're not out of the woods yet in regards to rain. Winds should continue to decrease by this point, but gusty conditions will probably persist across southwestern and south-central Europe down into North Africa. And now for the final day of February, Thursday the 29th, we could see one more day of significant rainfall across the western Mediterranean, but the storm should be weakening at this point, so the gusty conditions and heavy rain will continue to decrease. 
Up until this point, I have been saying the word rain a whole lot, but this storm is also going to bring some snowfall for the higher terrain. This is the snowfall forecast through the end of the month, and you can see light to moderate mountain snow in the forecast from North Africa into the Balkans, but look at how heavy it's going to be in the Alps and the Pyrenees. There's also quite a bit of orange showing up there and in some of the higher peaks, and that represents snow accumulations over 100 centimeters. We spent quite some time talking about this storm in great detail, and it's clear that February is going to end pretty windy and rainy for many areas in southern Europe into North Africa. But what's coming next, and will we see a similar pattern persist by the start of March? By February 26th and the 27th, we see those large storm systems leaving North America and impacting Greenland and Iceland. The more northern low pressure area which is impacting Greenland will probably brush by the southern coast of Iceland before curving north and eastward. That's going to keep some of the strongest winds out over the open sea, but even still a cold front will push into Ireland, the UK, and eventually Scandinavia. And then right on the heels of that, another low pressure will approach from the west, and this is actually the same one which was off the coast of the Carolinas. As this pushes through the region, you're going to notice some of those blue shades on the backside, which indicates some colder air coming in. I will be closely monitoring the trends with that specific storm in the coming days, but at the very least, it looks like another drop in the temperature roller coaster. This wave of low pressure will lead us right into March, starting the new month on a cold and rainy note. We do see some of those blue shades persisting over the UK and Ireland, so you might be asking if that means snow. At this point, I would say that any wintry weather is probably going to stay in the higher terrain, much like the last system, but if anything changes in that regard, I'll definitely provide more updates. Now, just before we do conclude, let's come back to this graphic here, our precipitation outlook. Instead of the 5-day forecast, this is the 10-day outlook, so this is just going to give you a general idea of what to expect as we start March. As you can see, things don't change too dramatically as far as precipitation patterns go, and it still looks like Western and Southern Europe is going to be taking the brunt of these storms, while Northern and Eastern areas are going to remain pretty dry. Now with that said, that's going to be all for today. The month of March looks very interesting to say the least, and there's quite a bit of uncertainty. As we get closer to the start of March, I'll try to do a deeper dive into the month, but I'll keep everyone updated on the latest developments regardless. If you have any further questions or comments, make sure to drop them down below, and if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next report.